It's time for Orchard Skills. Markdown is a lightweight, plain text formatting syntax that has become the writing and communication tool across the web. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be creating a Razor WebAssembly application that will render an Orchard Core Markdown blog post. Please stay with us and we'll get started. Welcome back. Markdown was developed by John Gruber and released in 2004. Gruber had grown tired of the effort involved in producing well-formatted HTML and set out to create a syntax and conversion tool that simplified the process. Because of how easy it is to learn, it's been ingrained in collaboration tools like Trillo, Zendesk, Slack, and of course, GitHub's README files. Markdown has many different implementations, CommonMark, GitHub flavored, and even vanilla flavored, a variant of Markdown with an unambiguous specification of its syntax. As for us, we'll be using the Markdown implementation used in the NuGet package MarkDig, a fast, powerful, common Mark compliant, extensible Markdown processor for .NET. Why this implementation? Well, that's the Markdown processor used in Orchard Core. Instead of starting from scratch, let's utilize what we created in a previous video titled Blazor and Orchard Core REST API Graphical. We created a Blazor WebAssembly application that queried a blog post content through a REST API call. So let's get started. Launch your favorite browser and head over to github.com slash orchard skills slash orchard skills dot orchard core dot blazor wasm api GraphQL. Let's select on the green code button and select open with GitHub desktop. And then also click on the button open GitHub desktop exe. And let's click the clone button. Okay, great. We have the Blazor Wasm API graphical GitHub repository cloned. Let's launch Visual Studio. The first thing we want to do is to click on the solution here right click and go to manage NuGet packages for solution and let's click on the browse tab and so what we're going to be doing is including the NuGet package markdig so let's and enter markdig in our search and there it is so the only place we'll be using it is in the client app so let's just click on that and then just install and hit ok and there we go we have markdig github NuGet package installed click on http request tester Scroll down to line 140. This is where we sent an HTTP request and then received the JSON format response. So what we need to do first is to deserialize the JSON in a class where we can access just the markdown. How do we do that? Well, with the JSON serialized dot deserialize method from the system dot text dot JSON. So we need to add a using. So let's head up to the top. And let's add a using system dot text dot JSON. Now we need to create the class that represents the response JSON we received from the HTTP request. How do we do that? Well, let's start off by looking at the actual JSON tag. You notice here that there's kind of like a placeholder for data, and then we have a blog post, and inside the blog post we have display text, subtitle, author, publish UTC, and then we have markdown body, and inside of that we have markdown. So let's scroll down here. And let's go to our code block. And just before our do request, let's go ahead and create our class structure for the JSON. Okay, here we have our class structure of our JSON. So our first class is API GraphQL. This is kind of like the root class, which contains a data property. And so our next class is our data class, which contains a blog post property. And you notice that the blog post is an array because we can have multiple blog posts inside. So that's an array to our property blog post. And then our class blog post, we have display text, subtitle, author, and publish UTC properties. And then also we have a property for the markdown body. And then finally, we have the class markdown body, which can 
contains the property markdown. So what's really important is that if we go back to our JSON file, we notice that all of these are kind of in lowercase, not, it's not camel case, it's kind of like the, a lowercase, uppercase structure. We need to follow that exact case sensitive structure. Let's also add some strings here, one for the actual markdown, and we'll just set that to, to a blank, and also for the HTML rendered markdown, and let's just put a P tag in there, okay? Now let's scroll down. So here, this is where we get our response, and we store it into the string response body. So after this, Let's add some code. And here we're going to have the class API GraphQL defined it here. And then we're going to have the, the class object API GraphQL. And then we're going to call the deserialize. And then we'll pass in the API GraphQL class and then also the response body. And what we want to do is make sure that there is an actual blog post before we start processing the markdown. So we'll go ahead and check if the length is greater than zero. And then this is where we actually get our markdown from the structure. So we go markdown equals API GraphQL dot data dot blog post blog post zero, which is the first blog post. And we know that there is one by looking at the length dot markdown body dot markdown. So that'll actually give us the text for the markdown. And so this is how easy it is to process our markdown. And what we do is we say our rendered HTML markdown is equal. We put a P tag inside of it and we just do a mark dig dot markdown to HTML and markdown. And that's, that's it. And that will create the HTML markdown. So one last thing is add it to our HTML. And that's really easy. And all we have to do is do an at markup string HTML markdown and that will display our blog post. So let's go ahead and run the application. So let's go up here to the top and make sure that we select our orchard skills at orchardcore.orchardcms and hit the green play triangle. So I'm not gonna show you how to do the configuration. So please check out my previous video titled Blazor and Orchard Core REST API GraphQL, and I show you how to set up the GraphQL feature and the anonymous role. Okay, so we are here at our call web API page, and let's go ahead and hit the send button. And there you go, we get the response, and then here's our HTML being displayed on the screen. This is kind of a little bit boring. Let's go ahead into the admin, enter our credentials, and hit the login button. And let's go to our blog, and let's go ahead and edit this blog post. Okay, let's make it more interesting. All right, go down to the bottom here, and let's publish. Let's go back to our main page and let's do another query here. Let's do send and there you go. This is a lot much better. Actually, you can click on a video here, play the video and we have introduction and here's an actual blog post being rendered. Isn't that neat? Let's recap. We first cloned the GitHub repository, Blazor and Orchard Core REST API, GraphQL. We added the markdig do get package to the client app. We added the using system.text.json. We created a class that represented the response JSON we received from the HTTP request so that we could call the JSON serialize.deserialize method. We added the code to deserialize and also render the markdown with markdig. At last, we added the HTML code to the page to display the blog post. We ran the application and clicked on the send button, which executed HTTP request to query the blog post content. The markdown from the blog post was rendered on the page. Finally, we went back and modified the blog post with a better example that contained video and images, and then redisplayed the page. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.